surface integration it involves finding the flux over a surface. In this case, we're using an example from section 19.2, problem 9. Our function will be x, i hat, y, j hat, z, k hat. And our, we'll be integrating over the region um, of this cylinder centered on the y axis from y equals plus 3 to y equals negative 3. It's a radius of 2. Now, one thing that makes these kind of problems much simpler is to pick the correct coordinate system. A coordinate system can make this problem much easier or much harder. We might start off using, um, on the endpoints, a Cartesian system. Or we could also do it with a cylindrical system. For the end point, for the ends, we have the integral of y of x um, i hat plus y j hat plus z k hat dot j hat. Now, this gives us the amount of flux that's coming out of the ends. Out of the... Out of, namely, this one in particular. Uh, the dot product simplifies the situation, leaving us with just y integrated dx dz. At this point in time, since our variable of integration, um, our variable and our variable of integrations are different, we can simply evaluate this as y dA, where the area is going to be y times uh, pi r squared r equals 2 y equals 3. We get a value of 3 pi 2 squared gives us 12 pi. Likewise The other endpoint, pardon that, we can write as xi hat, y j hat, z k hat dot minus j hat. Notice because we are going out the other side. This, these arrows are n perpendicular or normal to this end. So when we integrate this we get negative y dx dz minus y or simply over an area at this point we end up with, but since y equals negative, negative 3, we once again get 12 pi. Now, the cylindrical outer, outer boundary we have right here is a little bit more complicated. Now, our first, since x and Cartesian coordinates worked so well first time around, we might be tempted to try them again. However, for this particular symmetry, well, we certainly could do it in, in, in Cartesian coordinates. Nothing can stop us. It's much easier in cylindrical. It's much easier. In this case, we'll write out our function.
However, the trick is we always need a perpendicular vector to the surface. In this case, we write it out as cosine theta i hat plus sine theta k hat. Also, we need to be careful with the differentials at the end. Notice, because we're doing it in cylindrical coordinates, we have r included. Now, one thing to not panic about is the fact that we have miscellaneous different um, variables in here that we have not accounted for. Um, this is quite common, and we simply need to take into account what these variables are equal to. First, let's simplify. Or no, first let's set... Yeah, let's simplify. Let's take this dot product, and we will get our i hat x cosine theta r dy d theta integrated from as our variable order of integration does not matter yeah, it doesn't matter. That's okay. We can go from minus 3 to 3, 0 to 2 pi. Likewise, we can set up our k term as z sine theta r dy d theta. Now, since we have everything in terms of y and theta, we need to find out what, what, these, what these are equal to. We can define, when we set this up, we needed to have, set this up cosine in terms of x and z, a ratio and r. So we write cosine theta as x over r, in which case we get in which case x cosine theta r becomes x squared. Likewise, in this case sine Notice, when, when we're operating this, we're doing this in terms of z and x. So sine is z over r. Writing our functions, our triangle, in terms of the x and z. So, z sine theta r becomes z squared. Notice that the radius here is r, hence x squared plus z squared, not what, y squared, z squared, is r squared. That means we can write our these double integrals as x squared plus z squared dy d theta equals r squared dy d theta. 0, 2, pi. Now, we simply need to evaluate the, this function, which will give us a fresh sheet of paper so we don't crowd ourselves. Always a wise idea to get a fresh sheet of paper 
rather than try to crowd yourself. Clear writing leads to clear thinking, oddly enough. And so you're ever stuck on a problem, the first things to do is get a fresh sheet of paper. Okay, to finish this problem, um, since r is not one of our variables of integration, and it's independent of these two, we can put r squared, 0 to 2 pi d theta, minus 3 to 3 dy, where r is 2. Our theta integral gives us 2 pi. Integrating dy from negative 3 to 3 gives us 6. And we have uh, 4 times 6 times 2 that's 8 times 6, that's 48 pi. Which means we have 12 pi plus 12 pi from our ends plus 48 pi gives us 72 pi as the total flux through our surface being the surface of the cylinder.